simulation tools fall into several categories. Since people can often be unaware of the differences among the tools or even the existence of any of them, we'll briefly explain the major categories. Kinematic tools like Siemens Technomatics Robcad and Process Simulate Robotics let you analyze the real-time motion of robotic work cells optimize cycle times, optimize welding sequences, and increase process quality. Ergonomic tools like Jack and Process Simulate Human let you analyze human motion and optimize the ergonomics of human operation to enhance worker efficiency and minimize injuries. Computer-aided engineering tools like NXCAE let you analyze specialized items like thermal and flow analysis and finite element analysis early in the design process. This results in better performing products. Computer-aided manufacturing tools like NXCAM let you analyze specialized items like tool design, NC programming, feature-based machining and collision detection. This automates the development of molds, dyes, and fixtures for higher quality, lower cost, and faster turnaround for machining. As opposed to the first four categories that focus on individual work cells or products, Discrete event tools like plant simulation let you analyze the operation of an entire department or facility and optimize overall items like throughput, buffer or inventory sizes, workers, and scheduling. Discrete event simulations are also often referred to as throughput simulation. Although all these tools are really cool, the focus of today's webinar is on Technomatics Plant Simulation and the scheduling tool called OpCenter APS. People often ask when they should use an advanced scheduling tool versus a discrete event simulation tool, as they are both similar in that they can perform bottleneck analysis, utilize algorithms to calculate results, and are used by many manufacturing companies. Our next topic provides a handy comparison of plant sim versus op center APS, which illustrates the key differences between the tool tools. Note that op center APS was previously called Preactor. Our first question is who uses it? Mainly plant engineers and managers use plant simulation, while production control teams use the Op Center APS scheduling tool. Usually, plant simulation is used on a longer time scale during the design of a new facility or an update. The earlier, the better. While Op Center APS is used on a shorter time scale to make daily, weekly, or monthly operational decisions. Plant Sim's main display looks like the plant floor in either 2D or 3D, while OpCenter APS uses Gantt charts, usage plots, tabular schedules, and internal web pages. Plant Sim models realistic stochastic processing fluctuations and downtimes that simulates randomness that occurs on the plant floor. Scheduling moves forward. In Op Center APS, fluctuations feed back directly to the scheduling engine. Scheduling can be moved forward or backward and can be based on the bottleneck. Plant Sims include a genetic algorithms optimizer that can slash the time required to cover all what if possibilities, like experimenting with the scheduling of parts. Unlike plant sim that requires time to run simulations for the various scheduling options, OpCenter APS uses specialized fast algorithms to optimize schedules. For bottleneck analysis, plant sim has a unique bottleneck analyzer that helps you to pinpoint bottlenecks. Also, traditional time and state charts and worker charts can also help identify bottlenecks. While well, OpCenter APS has the ability to backward schedule to the bottleneck and forward schedule from it. 
What ifs in plant sim include the ability to change inputs like schedule tables, cycle times, downtimes, setups, and buffer sizes. You can also add or delete equipment to see their effect on throughput. An experiment manager lets you automate the what ifs, while Optimizer APS lets you adjust schedules on screen with a very nice drag and drop interface. You can also add or subtract overtime hours, see the impact of new or rush orders, and reallocate resources. Plant sim visualization includes the animation of parts and people moving through the model. This can help you to verify that the model represents reality and lets others see your facility in action. While Op Center dynamically updates from the MES to reflect progress of jobs at workstations. As you can see, some key differences between the tool tools include the forward-backward capabilities, dynamic integration, stochastic probabilistic events inclusion, and the real-time user interfaces. Our next topic provides you with an overview of plant simulation. At this point, I'd like to point out that Technomatics plant simulation can model facilities other than just automotive-like assembly line plants. In fact, nearly any type of facility can be modeled, including those that produce tiny but important things like ball bearings or large products like rockets, planes, trains, automobiles, tanks, ships, and construction equipment circuit boards, cell phones, containers, detergent, diapers, pretzels, candy, and my personal sweet tooth weakness, ice cream, as well as the facilities that process orders, package, store, and deliver these products, even facilities where us humans are among the parts that move through a facility like airports and hospitals. Technomatics Plant Simulation is a powerful software tool that allows you to create a digital model that simulates the operation of your existing or planned facility. The results of a simulation run let you analyze your facility, including determining throughput and location of bottlenecks. Plant Sims Experiment Manager lets you automate what-if games, and genetic algorithms can help you find an optimal solution even quicker. This lets you quickly show the bang for the buck of different improvement scenarios or the lack of it for other scenarios. Key features of Plant Sim include object orientation, which provides intuitive use of powerful built-in and custom-made objects that let you build models quicker. Hierarchy lets you structure complex models in an intuitive manner. It also makes it easier for you to make changes while having to tediously rearrange things like other flat structured products require. Last but not least, inheritance lets you make changes in one place. All children are changed accordingly. This ensures quality and saves you a lot of model building and updating time. As you can see, Plant Simulation can interface with nearly any other software product, including Team Center, databases, spreadsheets, and factory CAD, even PLCs on the factory floor. Plant Sim's analysis tools include a bottleneck analyzer that helps you to pinpoint bottlenecks, a real time saver. Sankey diagrams let you see the flow of material. The thicker the line, the greater the flow. This can help you verify that the model accurately represents your facility and can help you to pinpoint potential problem areas and balance out the flow. And Gantt charts display resource utilization over time. PlantSim also has a unique, powerful energy analyzer tool and reports that let you evaluate and optimize energy uses. For example, the screenshot at the top is a section of a model that includes six workstations, color-coded circles indicate energy usage, red the highest, purple in between, and blue the least. This makes it easy to pinpoint areas to focus an improvement on. The chart below shows the details of energy consumption. PlantSim's visualization options include 2D. This option is quick in two ways, quick modeling time and quick simulation runtime. 
CAD integration lets you import a CAD file and use it to place modeling objects in exact location. Some people prefer this, others prefer not having to place objects this way. The great thing is that plant simulation accommodates both types of users. A 3D view is optional, but it is very easy to auto-generate and enhance. The great thing is that both 2D and 3D views are available, so you can take advantage of each one's strengths without being limited to one or the other as in other products. So I'd like to stress there's just one model, but you see two different views of it, either 2D and or 3D. PlantSim also offers a unique optional view of your facility. Instead of the standard equipment view, the value stream library provides a value stream map view. This is great for those who prefer a VSM view. Plant simulation's benefits include enabling you to detect and eliminate problems, increase planning accuracy, optimize logistics and performance, and finally, PlantSim is the perfect tool to justify capital investment. Siemens surveyed 600 plant simulation users in approximately 200 companies. The results include a 12 to 1 average value cost ratio. I've personally witnessed this kind of ROI in projects that I've been involved in. Our next topic is an overview of Ops Center APS. Steve Weiss, our local expert, will be presenting this topic. Well, let's begin with discussing the production scheduling challenges that lead to the need for an APS system in the first place. First, in a production facility, there's inherent complexity. A modern facility is producing multiple products, often with multiple pro possible routings. These routings might involve varying cycle times, curing times, expiring times. And as you change between products, the setups, teardowns, and cleanouts are going to vary. Add to that external contingencies. Product demand and the mix of product demand changes. The volume of product demand may change over time due to seasonal factors or other factors. In addition, some customers are going to insist upon rush orders and some vendors may in unintentionally impart material shortages. And then there are the things that we wish we could control, but we can't, and those are the internal contingencies. Occasionally, equipment breaks down. Occasionally, staff is absent or has been leaned out. Also, there is scrap that can occur during the production process, and often there is rework. So all of these mitigate against the ability to simply create a production schedule on a whiteboard or a spreadsheet. An operational solution for advanced production scheduling involves the following. The scheduling engine itself is what calculates and accommodates the internal inherent complexity of the scheduling problem. From the ERP system, it is going to learn of those external contingencies which are inevitable. Amendments to orders, material availability, whether overabundance or shortage. Based upon the schedule that is calculated in light of these internal contingencies, the scheduling engine can feed that schedule back to the ERP system so that salespeople and managers know when they can expect products to complete and be ready to ship. In order to meet that schedule, you're also going to want to be able to consider internal contingencies. Those are typically going to feed back to the scheduling engine from the MES or SCADA system, which is going to notify the scheduling engine when equipment has broken down when orders are progressing ahead of schedule or behind schedule. This in turn represents sets of data that can alter the schedule 
going forward. Now, the benefits of an advanced production scheduling system for a production control team are as follows. It's an optimization tool that defines strong baseline schedules. It's a communication tool that publishes schedules to the shop floor and processes feedback. And it's a decision support tool that helps the production control team respond rationally to fluctuations. And then ultimately, the result is a profitability tool that helps the facility maximize throughput and minimize their costs. The Ops Center APS solution, which is produced by Siemens and is resold and configured by PNC, is really a best-in-class solution. To the production control team, it presents Gantt charts, utilization charts, and diagrams that help them understand the baseline schedule and help them modify that schedule based upon tribal knowledge, based upon the fluctuations that external contingencies and internal contingencies make inevitable. From the outside, outside of the production control team, the outputs can be very simple, very straightforward, tabular outputs to say, this is what will be produced, this is where it will be produced, and when production should start and end. That way, everyone on the shop floor or in the management hierarchy knows what the expectations are. Siemens, the maker of Ops Center APS, is a world leader in advanced production and scheduling systems. It has the largest install base serving the manufacturing sector across the globe, uh, ranging from mid-sized companies to some of the largest multinational companies in the world. And like PlantSim, it operates across multiple sectors, multiple markets, multiple verticals, because it has the flexibility to solve any scheduling requirement. It's interesting to note uh, is that even though both tools are predominantly used in the manufacturing industry, they have been successfully deployed in the services industry too. And I'd like to just recap a little bit about who uses it. And um, again, plant simulation, it's mainly plant engineers and managers. Op Center APS is production control teams. And um, Plant Sim, you use it in the design of a new facility or an update of, of an existing facility, and it's a longer time scale. So you want to use this as early in your process as possible because otherwise you might make a poor decisions about the design of your facility. So you optimize it virtually and then, and then implement it in the real world. Whereas App Center, it's uh, used daily, weekly, monthly operational decisions. It's a shorter time scale. And in plant sim, the display looks like the plant floor in 2D and 3D. So the focus there is the, the overall operation, whereas Op Center has a wonderful user interface for scheduling. Gantt charts, uses plots, schedules, et cetera. And in plant simulation, the modeling is realistic stochastic processing, fluctuations and downtimes incorporating, and the scheduling moves forward. It's a lot more detailed. There's a lot of stuff going on in there. Whereas Op Center APS, the fluctuations feedback directly to the scheduling engine. And the neat thing about that is you can go forward or backward scheduling, and it can be based on bottleneck. So they each have their role. And plant simulation has built-in or offline statistical and genetic algorithms, whereas Op Center has special built-in scheduling algorithms that are optimized just for schedules. And plant simulation for bottleneck and analysis, they have a wonderful bottleneck analyzer on a time and state charts and worker charts to help you pinpoint the bottlenecks. And in Op Center, you can configure the model again to backward schedule to the bottleneck and or forward schedule from it. Plant simulation allows uh, what ifs and uh, in their own way and uh, Op Center with adjusting the schedules. And in terms of visualization, in plant simulation, you actually see parts and people moving. And in Op Center, it dynamically updates from MES.